The seal on Saber's left arm gone. And the noble phantasm Excalibur. It is just as powerful as I've seen in the games. Just decimates Caster. Even shows Caster a bit of closure. Still not sure if this was him. Still delusion that the light refers to Jean. Or if he finally realized that it never was. I'm not really sure. But an end for Caster and Ryunosuke. It is what it is. Now, Kadia, I don't think is dead. It looked like he was gonna die. Then Kiri showed up and started to do some weird shit. I'm assuming he gave him mana to make him live so that he can watch him struggle more. And is that what Kiri's entertainment is? I have kind of expected Kiri to show up and backstab Tokiomi just so he could take Gilgamesh because I thought that's what might happen since he has the command spells, but no master. Now, sorry, servant. Kiritsugu? Wonder what he's, what he's gonna do to Lancer now. Cause like Lancer straight up is super handicapped. Kanit is gone. Not really, but he's pretty much done. Solawi, I'm not sure how competent she is as a master. Diarmu just got rid of his golden spear thing for the sake of caster. I mean, sorry, yeah, for the sake of saber slaying caster. So I feel like the objective smart thing to do if you're just planning to win is to just gang up on Lancer and destroy him immediately. Let's begin today's reaction. Kaneth, what you busy with Rise? <laughs> Yeah, cover up, cover up, that's right. Just call it a movie CGI, that's right. Whenever Japanese public sees crazy uh, fictional stuff going on, they just think that, oh, it must be a movie shooting. Mage Association. What's your request? You didn't even fucking help. Lancer, all he did was remove the seal. It was all Saber then. I'd say in terms of people who put in the work, Saber number one because she actually slayed it. Ryder did buy time, right? For sure. Lancer just watched and removed the seal. Gilgamesh and Berserker were fucking around having their own plane fight in the air. Kiritsuku Loki did help a lot by slaying Ryunosuke though. Sora Ui. Connected? What do you mean? Whoa! 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 I heard a backstab noise! Whoa! Arm! Arm! Kiritsuku? Maya? Kire! <laughs> Kiritsugo? Maya Ki <laughs> Maya ain't fucking around! She just showed up out of nowhere! He cuts her arm off and now she's gonna steal the arm, place it in the bag, and then we're gonna give the spells to Kiritsugo, right? <laughs> Maya! <laughs> Salah is done! It's... I guess all we was so in shock she had no clue. Okay, I already thought that her name was stupid, Sola Ui. But it's Sola Ui Nuadare Sofia Ri. What kind of fucking naming scheme is this? <laughs> she already wrapped it up. What the hell? That was fast as fuck. What the hell is she wrapped it up? Oh. Wait, what? I thought we were gonna take the hand and... Lancer will be returned. Get out of there quickly. What the? She shot the hand? Okay, I thought there was a way to like... Take the hand and give these spells to Kiritsugu, but... Kadia! In front of the Matos. Kiri saves Kadia? Why? Yeah, why'd you do that? He feels joy. Is he happy? The thrill. Pleasure. <laughs> is there. Yo! Is this apples? No, I don't think this is apples. But let's just fucking, for whatever reason, think that these are apples. These are not apples. This is just forbidden fruit. Kirei realizing his own desires. The sinner right now. He's he's rebelling. He's found out his own pleasure. In my head, Canon, these are fucking apples, bro. 
Lancet didn't do shit except remove the seal, which was pretty significant. But in terms of how much DPS parsing we did, utilities, I don't know. I feel like Lancet didn't do shit. Nah, man. Get out of here. Risei, don't give him one. Yeah, the origin bullet fucked him up. Yeah. Yep. What are you good for, Kenneth? Temporarily. Cope. Yeah, you gonna give him one? How does this work? What is this? Fucking Jesus Christ blood? Alright, transferred! <laughs> you got one spell? Nobly. Not very believable. Oh! Oh! Yo, Maya first, now Kane. Kane is just learning from Kiritsugu. I, well, he's not a mage anymore, right? What can Kane really do? He can't use mana. His circuits are all fucked up. So he's, he's learned from Kiritsugu. I'll shoot guns too. God gotcha. Kill, reset, prevent command spells. Damn it. The hands. The spells are gone. Oh, bro, come on. Where were you? Poor dear mood, man. Damn, dude. No proper contract. So there is like even lower reasons as to why Lancer couldn't even be there. This whole makeshift, like, temporary master bullshit is the reason. Don't blame him. Maya took her somewhere. Maya what? The mole? <laughs> That's right, Lancer, your slutty mole, your beauty charm seduced my wife. This is your fault. <laughs> Bro, come on! You're really blaming the mole? <laughs> no, 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 he didn't give in to the lust. Your wife did, because you're such a limp dick, bro. Dear Moo just wants loyalty. What a fucking shitty master. <laughs> Kiritsugu, please save Dear Mood from his fate, bro. This is so annoying, bro. Just fucking snipe this asshole. もうなら人やらで。ああ。レイに荒がってみせ。叶うまい。それがサーバントという That's our car. Kiritsugu's car. Okay. でも妙ね。手入れもろくにしていないのか。ヘロ。お前がここに現れるとはな。私の味方が調べ上げて。マイアライ。マイマスター。キャンセイダー。アルジの言い名付けが今どこに。アバウトダー。でも、お前に心当
wonder if Saber's gonna not use her left hand. Because, like, Deer Mood is very nerfed right now. He released the seal by breaking his other spear, so, like, what now? Saber, <laughs> You should just date. No longer invisible sword. <laughs> Who's protecting Kanith right now? Because he's just in a wheelchair. Maya has already been taken by... Sorry, sorry. Sola Ui has already been taken by Maya. We know Kiritsugu is around doing something. What? <laughs> so, while these two are gonna have their little duel of night chivalry, you know? What's Kiritsugu doing? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> also, there's no point having the armor on right now, right? Because now we know that the armor is a hindrance against the mana cutting red spear, and he doesn't have the gold spear anymore, but. She's tired. Everyone's nerfed. Oh, she's not using the left hand intentionally. Alright. There's a sportsmanship. But like, what happens if you lose here? Think about that. She claims that like if she uses her left hand, it's gonna be shame for her. Because Knight Chivalry, but what happens if she lost while not using her left hand? Would she feel any shame for her master? That she put her own pride and ego? The Knight Chivalry before the actual goals of the Grail War. I mean, that has been the theme throughout the entirety of Fate Zero between Kiritsugu and Saber. Saber. No, it's not. I mean, best strategy. Best strategy is to use both hands right now. What are you fucking talking about? Fatal Mis Yeah. <laughs> Best strategy in terms of not winning for the sake of winning, but having some sort of fucking honor here. But I shit on their honor. <laughs> I spit on their chivalry. I don't know how to feel about this knight chivalry anymore, man. In the beginning, I was kind of hesitant, but it was the beginning of 8-0, and I was like, it's kind of cool. But the more I see this, the more I realize that these two are just fucking delusional. Am I wrong? Maybe I'm too Kiritsuku-pilled. <laughs> I, I am. I I'm very Kiritsuku-pilled. If Ryder saw this, what would he think? Everyone has their own different philosophies and, like, way of life, but... Maybe it's because I'm too much like Hiritsugu, I think that this is fucking just two people LARPing as knights in the modern era. I don't know. Kaneth! Kaneth! Or, uh, Maya got Sola! Oh, oh, oh. Wait! What is that? Smoke bomb? Bullet? Kiritsugu's around. Kiritsugu's near. Oh shit! <laughs> Cold, so cold, just shows up, throws a bullet. It's like, hey, hey, cripple, look, I got your wife. Shh. <laughs> oh my god, it's happening. Uh huh. That might be the most unbelievable thing. <laughs> that, that might be the most unbelievable thing in Fate Zero. Kiritsugu just tossing a scroll and it perfectly fucking unfolding and then drifting right into Kane's hands. Wow, the accuracy. Self-gyas? Unbreakable contract. <laughs> just put, just put a fucking supreme jacket on Kiritsugu right now. Look at his pose. Someone, someone please, drip Kiritsugu out in the supreme jacket, meme this shit. Binding spell, unbreakable. What's the rules? 
Siliak. Mm. Oh, this is pretty interesting lore. Emi Akiritsuko's dad is Norikata, fifth descendant of the House of Emi. Oh. This contract forbids him from. Well, <laughs> what about Maya, though? Do you know this guy plays dirty? Kiritsu, sure, you're gonna prevent Kiritsugu from fucking harming you guys. Maya and Kanith will be prevented. But, but, like, Kanith and Sola Ui will be prevented from Kiritsugu. But Maya is still around! Mm -hmm. Even in death, this is a no joke contract. Transcends life. Yeah, he, yeah, he can't, but he got no clue. He has no idea. Well, it's, it's, it, what, what options do you have? Do you think you can win this? I think you're cooked. Your only option is to sign this and just hope that you two will survive because Kiritsuko can't kill you. But little does he know, Maya is cocked and fucking loaded, ready to go, right? <laughs> Now we will see exactly how prideful Kaneth is. Will he abandon his pride as a ma mage and survive right now by signing the contract? Or will he die as a mage? Let's see it. Look. Come on, time's ticking. Tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> oh man. So loud. You can sign it. Ho! Ho! Bro, this episode is just random fucking sh this plot. It's not random shit, but the first one was. What was it? Fuck, fuck, fuck. It was Maya cutting off Solowee's hand out of nowhere. I'm like, oh! The other one was Kane is shooting Reese. Oh! And now Deer Mood. He just stabbed himself? Command spell? Self harm? <laughs> That's the only option. Oh, he's getting everything out of Kanus. He signed it. He signed it. He signed it. That's cold. Bro. We, we are milking Kanus for everything he's gotten. And he thinks that he got it. He saved Solaui. He has accepted Kiritsuko's contract. Used his command spell to make Diarma kill himself. But like, now what, you know? Like, nah, I don't think it's over yet. I don't think the plan is over yet, man. <laughs> Poor dear mood. <laughs> yes. Yes, they do. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Wow. I think it's the soundtrack and the voice acting right now. Dude, this dialogue from Lancer is insane. This is the most emotional fucking heartfelt fucking passage. Because like, his entire thing is, I want a chivalrous duel. I want a chance to prove my loyalty. Do you guys want to win that badly, though, to squander everything that I love and hold dear to my heart? Oh my god! Yo, this scene is amazing! What a sad ending for Lancer. The Grail is cursed! That's not good. Damn. I know that I was shitting on their nice chivalry the entire time. But this ending for Lancer, he does not deserve this. Especially with how he died in his actual lore. And he just wanted another chance to like, have his loyalty be returned and have a chance. And now he goes down cursing the grail. This is a fucking tragic end for this guy, man. Like, isn't this fucked up that Caster got an actual closure?
<laughs> Caster and Ryu and Nosuke honestly had a pretty like cool death. Kind of like, not happy, but they had their ends met and they had their character arc concluded. Oh, Ryu and Nosuke, I will finally show you cool. And then the light shows up. He's like, oh, it's Sean. And he ascends. And then this is what lands against and Castor Ryu and Nosuke, they went around just killing children and women. And this is what lands against, bro. That's fucked up. Man, get it to go. <laughs> yes. The Gias binds Emi and Kiritsugu, but like, we have other people. <laughs> yeah, I can't, but she can. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh my god, dude, this guy is a menace! He's a fucking menace, dude! <sighs> we know Kiritsuko plays dirty. We know he plays dirty, but like, this is... I, I feel almost bad for Kenneth and Salaway of how scammed they were. This is Kiritsugu in his just peak performance. Like, everything Kiritsugu did this episode is fucking peak. I actually... Am I crazy for... This might be my favorite episode of Fate Zero. This, to me, is more hype than the... Like, Saber using Excalibur. There's something so deep about Lancer, Saber, Knight Chivalry getting shit on. Lancer having the most cruel ending. Kiritsugu just doing the most backhanded fucking just sinister ploys. And everything is working out. Kiritsugu just smoking as- I bet you this fucking smoking was a sign. Dude, I bet you the moment Kiritsugu lit up the cigarette? Maya was like, that's the sign. I'll take him out right now. That's the execution signal. Bang, 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 bang. Four, five, six. Uh, 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 five uh, bullets to the uh, chest. Uh, Holy. <laughs> wait, Kanan is still alive. Wait, wait, wait. It's not over yet. Any last words? Oh, put the cherry on the top. Just, just, just fucking just destroy him. Say, I don't know. What is he going to do? How is he going to finish him off? Because he's not dead yet. <laughs> No. No, you will suffer. I can't. I, I, I can't. Saber mad. Saber L. Saber L. Bro, Saber. You gonna show Kanan mercy right now? I wanna see Kanan just struggle more on the ground. Oh, man. Bro, the wheelchair stopped spinning to symbolize Kanan's life is ended. Like... Oh, this episode is crazy, bro. Oh! You're a monster. Mage killer. He's never denied it. Well, our goal is mutual. To win the Holy Grail. Do you not want to win the Grail? Oh, no. You had no clue, girl. It, that is hard to believe, but like, everyone has their different interpretation of what saving the world is. And Emi Akiritsugu, he has dreams and ideals that I'm not too sure what it is yet. But this guy is willing to just sacrifice so much for the greater good. I think that's like the vague idea of what his dreams and ideals are. I, I mean, <laughs> dirty deeds have to be done. I mean, it gets the results. To make sure no one has to ever cry like that again. I refuse. Yeah, even this time, he went too far, bro. Oh shit, this is Aidy's first time. I wonder on like a scale of 10, how bad this was. Like, is this a, a casual like 3 out of 10? That's a Tuesday afternoon for Emiya Kiritsugu? Or to him, was this even something so heinous that he's not proud of? I'm not sure, but this is the first time Aidy's seeing, you know, his, her husband in action at his job. 
True, like Hide could. Yeah, okay. I'd be mad. No. Oh. Oh, again. Bro, everyone has their own philosophy in how they do things. Up until now, it looked like Kiritsugu was a fucking soulless, corrupt maniac, a fiend, mage killer. And Saber's like, nah, you are not a man in my eyes. And Kiritsugu's saying, bro, nah, Saber's a pillar who takes pride in such things. Honor? Glory? You're killing. So I guess it has to come down to, fundamentally, at the end of the day, lives are being lost. Even if you claim to have knight chivalry and have an amazing duel between knights, someone is going to die. And in that sense, having glory and honor, it is almost disrespectful to the lives lost? Like, what is Kiritsuko's mentality? He would. He would. Ooh. And you couldn't say Britain, right? That's lore accurate. Got it. To Kiritsugu, all killing is bad. There is no glory, there is no nobility in the battlefield. Lives will be shed. And to me, it, none of that shit matters. So therefore, I'll pursue my own ideals and, you know, dreams with my own underhanded tactics that has no, like, hypocrisy in thinking what I'm doing is good. I'm not, like, a self-serving good person. I don't take these things I'm doing lightly to heart. What I'm doing is walking the path of a Grim Reaper. But you... Are disrespecting the battlefield because you think like you have your own hypocrisy to justify why you're killing is good when all killing is bad. Interesting. Interesting. Kiritsuko's answer is probably such that war would never happen if his, his goal is accomplished. The battlefield is hell. Ah. I get what he's saying. One side is acting as if there's anything good about it, and the other side has completely accepted the demented nature of war and just accepts it. And what I'm doing. I don't, I'm not proud of it. I'm not happy about it. I'm just doing the job that needs to be done so that no more suffering needs to be done if his wish comes true. Mm. And she is that dazzling hero. Damn. We are all monkeys, man. Cavemen. Unga Bunga. Still stuck in the Stone Age. Humiliation? Maybe Kiritsuku wants someone that juxtaposes his ideals and philosophies to learn a lesson so that she can understand that you are literally the epitome of everything that I fucking despise and things that I want to get rid of this world. Damn. He's so professional and cold. Maya's ready to pick him up. Let's go. Damn. Kiritsuku is like the most black pilled person I've ever seen in anime, man. Like, see, I thought that I was edgy. I thought that I had a pretty enlightened view of the world of never expecting anything from anybody, thinking people are just fucking monkeys. But Kiritsugu is making me look like a saint. And his philosophy, is, is he wrong? He's not. But I feel like the theme of fate, or at least it seems like to me, is that everyone has their own different philosophy. There is not one correct solution. There's no one correct idea. Everybody is the embodiment of their own ideals and philosophies, and it's the clash of these ideals and whoever will come out on top, which will then have their ideals cemented in history. Hmm, what about that? Do you have an answer for that? Yeah, we gotta get the Kiritsuko flashback, bro. The little flashback that we had once was during the origin bullet and there was like a lady. But until we get any Kiritsuko's- And it's- that flashback is gonna be fucked. What could have possibly happened to him that he feels this way about the world, right? 
Something so traumatic must have happened that he can only think this way. <laughs> but it was never realized. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. He would never make this kind of face. He would never let his personal feelings get in the way. Kiritsugu taking the bait and showing this face means that Saber is 100% correct. Something happened in the past. He wanted to be a hero, but he couldn't due to his ideals back then, and therefore he must have changed. <laughs> Light mode Kiritsugu versus di like dark Kiritsugu, man. But the grill might be cursed now. A deer mood, you know. But we know that's not gonna happen, right? What do you say? I'll make sure the blood I spill in Fuyuki is the last blood humanity will ever shed, but... Unlimited Blade Works exists. <laughs> and that shit happens after Fate Zero. So I guess Kiritsugu's never accomplished goals, you know? Like... And that's... <sighs> I still find Emiya Kiritsugu to be one of the most compelling characters in Fate Zero, if not in anime. I, I just love his black-peeled view on society itself, but... I don't know, man. It, it, it does feel like... We'll have to see more. We'll have to see what his backstory actually is, but... What Saber's saying here, I think, is also true. And I think Kiritsugu definitely knows. Maybe he's simply working through these ideals and hopes and dreams, but at the end of the day, it's nothing but just simple vengeance from his own end. He'll be that greater evil. Damn. Does that mean Kiritsugu is an anti-hero? I'm not sure if I use this term loosely. I'm not completely sure if I understand the term anti-hero, but... Is this not a case where... A seemingly protagonist is taking on the ideals and becoming the villain for the greater good so that he can save the world in a fucked up way? Huh. Damn, that was rough. Yeah. Oh no, ID is pretty much dead. Oh no, ID is losing all energy. No. Terminus of honor is today's episode. Hold up. What does the word terminus mean? Is that the end? Terminus is either the end or transportation line or travel route. Today's episode, literally taunting at Saber and Lancer. Is there a post credit scene? There is it. Today truly was the terminus of end, man. The honor of Saber and Lancer coming to an end. And maybe even hinting at a past Kiritsugu with these hopes and ideals to be some sort of champion of justice. Also, his terminus of end and making into this kind of person. Today's episode? It might actually be my favorite episode of Fate Zero so far. Yes, there were some amazing animations and cool noble phantasm happening, but I don't know. Just eye candy doesn't do it enough for me. I watch shows like this for like the psychological aspect and finally we get to delve into the inner machinations of who Emiya Kiritsugu is and how he does his job. Perhaps today was a casual Tuesday afternoon, nothing too special, but the acts of horror that he committed, just making Maya cut off Solaui's hand, shoot the command spell so it's no longer available, forcing Kanit into a contract, a Gia something that forbids himself from killing him, and then making Kaneth use his command spell to kill Diarmuid. And then Maya ends them, bro. This shit was so cold. And perhaps my favorite moment was not actually Kiritsugu, but Diarmuid's cry. His screams, his cry of just like anger. Like you would squander on our ideals and like chivalry. You want to win that bad? And then he cursed us at the end. The wrath of Deermood, bro. The Grail has been cursed. And it is such an unfortunate ending for Lancer. And slowly but surely, I get to realize more about the memes of how Lancer is the most unluckiest. <laughs> this is such an unlucky ending. It's just, think about it. Think about fucking Castor and Ryunosuke's end. 
<laughs> versus Kaneth and Lancer. Now, Kaneth isn't that good of a person, but he's not a fucking serial killer like Ryunosuke. Ryunosuke and Caster felt like they had their recent sort of enlightenment. They had closure. They had a happy ending. Kaneth and Lancer's ending is beyond cursed. This is fucking crazy, bro. Kiritsugo's kill count in this war now, I guess, is two, right? Ryunosuke and uh, Kaneth. Well, technically, Maya is the one that killed them, but damn. Oh, and then the conversation at the end between these two about the battlefield, honor and glory. But Kiritsuko despises that and he will be that greater evil if that means it's gonna prevent this fucking endless cycle of meaningless death. Man, super heavy episode, super philosophical episode and I love it. This is Fate Zero at its best in my opinion, or at least from the stuff that I want to see from Fate Zero. This episode gave me everything that I wanted to from Kirisugu, like him showing up and just going, shh, at the contract. <laughs> so fucking cold. Well, that's it from me. If you're still here, though, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for even more content. Then I'll until next time. Take care.